Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Johnston Sakwa, coming to you live on the Scripture Prescription this amazing morning. I want us to pray and then we'll listen to the voice of the King. Father, we thank you this morning. We bless you. Thank you for the privilege to be called your children. As we listen to your voice this morning, give us understanding that we can be able to appreciate what it is that you're doing in our lives. I thank you and I honor you this morning. Let all the glory be unto you, O God. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. What a privilege to speak the word of God into this morning. I want to speak about a subject, pass the test, pass the test. Places of elevation have got to do with you passing the test. I want to read the Bible in the book of Job, chapter number one. I want to read the book of Job, chapter number one. I want to get the right translation for us this morning. Job, chapter number one. We're going to read from verse number one, quite a number of verses. But I'm speaking about passing the test. Job, chapter number one, from verse number one. There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. And the man was blameless and upright and one who feared God and shunned evil. And seven sons and three daughters were born to him. Also, his possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household, so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. Let nobody cheat you that people who are believers should not have wealth. That is a lie from the devil. Job was a man of means. In fact, he says, the Bible tells us, so this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. Praise the Lord. Verse number four. And his sons would go and feast in their houses, each on his appointed day, would send all and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. So it was when the days of feasting had run their course that Job would send and sanctify them and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cast God in their hearts. This or thus Job did regularly. You can see, they were so endowed that they would afford feasts in the houses of their brothers every time, and they would invite their sisters and celebrate and have Mary and their father would sacrifice to God just in case they had done anything wrong against God. Verse number six. Now there were days when the sons of God came to present themselves to the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? So Satan answered and said, From going to and fro the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is none like him on earth, a blameless and upright man, who fears God and shuns evil. Satan answered and said, and the Lord said, does Job, uh, Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, his household, and all around him on, on him on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, his possessions, and have increased in the land. But now, stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely cast you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. I want you to understand, child of God, the testimony that God has upon Job. Very clear issues come out here. That when you are upright and you are okay with God, there will be a hedge around you. And the devil brings confusion, trying to say that this man Job loves God because only of the age. And he says, if it was not that, Job would never, you know, follow you, God. Now, I have said this before, that when you have got a purpose on this earth, it becomes very difficult for the enemy to black you out of this life. Now, God said, I've given you permission, go and touch him, accept him, his person. His person here is his spirit because, I mean, Job was inflicted by wounds upon his body. So the person here, we're not referring 
to the physical body. We are referring to the spiritual man when God says, lay everything that you have is on his, in your power, but do not lay your hand upon his person. And then the devil tempted Job. I want to read verse number 22, then we'll venture into what I want to say. When Job was afflicted by the enemy after the devil sought permission, verse number 22 says, In all this Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. In all these episodes of stress and disaster and calamities, Job did not sin nor charge God with any wrong. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, it is important for us to pass the test when it's thrown our way. Just know that the enemy will keep attempting to test you. Your integrity will be tested. Your position in God will be tested. Your integrity, your character will be tested at any time. You must be prepared to pass the test. What do you do when nobody is watching? Job's test was in a high level of testing. There were disasters, calamities that happened when the enemy was allowed to touch everything around him, including his own children, including the property. Now, many people or some people put their trust in their intellectual capacity, put their trust in the, their endowment, their wealth, the things they possess. What if those things are removed from you? Would you still be trusting God? Would you still be trusting God? If the company you work for is undergoing challenges to an extent that certain uh, privileges are withdrawn, would you still work the same way for that organization? Well, organizations take care of individuals in the times of grace, times of goodness. They are taken care of in a big way, significant way. What would happen if some of these things are removed because the companies or the marketplace environment is not conducive for the company to make profits? What, how would you behave? Would you pass the test? Now, Job had been endowed by God. We just read. He's one of the greatest men in the East. And the Bible tells us all these things were attacked by the devil. But Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. Are there times you have blamed God for your predicaments? Are there times you have felt God left you? Have you ever felt that God has not been fair? Have you ever felt that God would have done it in a different way? Have you been in such a position? I want to decree to you this morning, we have to have the mind of Christ and pass the test. Tests will be on our lives every day. Tests will come our way every day. The enemy desires to remove you from the course of God, to remove you from the dimension that God wants you to go. Will you pass the test? Will you pass the test? And so it is imperative, it is critical, it's of greatest need that we will do all it takes to pass the test. Remember, a test is a place or an opportunity for elevation. It's a place to rise, it's a place to shine, it's a place to showcase God's power. It's a place to move in the focus and direction of God. Will you pass the test? I came to encourage this morning. Pass the test. Be on the lookout. Be on the watch out. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. The Bible tells us elsewhere, having done all to stand. Having done all to stand. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Pass the test. Don't fail. Job was tested in all its extreme nature. But he still passed the test. The Bible tells us in all these things, in all these calamities, in all these predicaments, Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. Remove the blame game. 
take responsibility. Be sharp. Ask God for a, def a discerning spirit. That you will see something and you'll know what it has been sent to your life to do. And so resist. The Bible tells us resist the devil and he will flee away from us. Be a man or woman of character. Be a man of divine focus and direction. This is my prayer this morning. May the good Lord bless you even as you pass each and every test. Put your way in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning. Oh, what a wonderful God. What a wonderful message. We give you praise and glory this morning. We appreciate you for your faithfulness. Appreciate you for your love and your care. And we give you glory and honor this morning. I want to thank you and to bless you. Help us to pass every test that will come our way. I bless you, Father, this morning and I honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The good Lord be with you. The good Lord bless you. This has been your host, Pastor Johnston Sack. We're coming to you live on the scriptural prescription, your daily morning dose of the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Shalom. The good Lord bless you. The good Lord be with you. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow morning by the grace of God. Thank you so much for your sacrifice and your presence. God bless you. Amen and amen.